welcome back. Today we are continuing on our journey through reversible reactions. Last time we talked about the effect of concentration and pressure on the position of equilibrium and we made sure we understood that basic language of position of equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium and closed and open system. What we're going to focus on on this video is how temperature affects position of equilibrium. Okay, so just like we stated last time, Le Chatelier's principle does say whatever you do to the system, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to try to reverse that change, counteract that change, oppose the change made to the system. However you want to put it, whatever you do to it, it's going to do the opposite. Okay, so in this example, what if I decrease the temperature in the system? Now, once again, the system is just the big block of space where the chemicals are within a closed system. If you are increasing the temperature, it's not necessarily to one side of the equation or the other. It's just the machine that they're in, the reaction vessel, the test tube, whatever the case may be, that you're increasing the temperature of everything all together. So we've got the same example again. This is just a nice convenient example of a reversible reaction where we've got sulfur dioxide, oxygen and sulfur trioxide as the product there. So if you have it like that, that doesn't give you any idea of which is sort of the hot and cold side. And that's what we are going to do. We're going to label the hot side of the equation and the cold side of the equation as well. Just like we did with the pressure where we labeled the low pressure side and the high pressure side. Just labeling it up a bit helps you kind of think about where you're going to go with your answer. Or certainly that's how it helps me anyway. So if in a sentence, if in a little paragraph in, in the question, it tells you that um, heat is produced when sulfur trioxide is made, you might actually get a little thing like that where it says plus heat. Therefore, in this case, the right hand side of the equation, as represented by the fiery fist there, uh, that is the hot side of the equation. So the right hand side in this case is the hot side. Therefore relative to that, the left hand side would be, I've got an ice fist going that way now, uh, that side of the equation would be the cold side of the equation. Okay, so let's take this back to our answer format that we discussed last time. So just a cheeky recap of the answer format here. We're going to start with if I and state the factor that is changing. The equilibrium shifts to and then you need to either say the left hand side or the right hand side. To the side with, um, so in case of pressure, we're talking about to the side with more particles in terms of concentration. It varied what we could actually put there uh, to replace the chemicals that have lost. Or we could talk about rate in this case. With temperature, we're going to say to the cold side or the hot side, but actually to the exothermic or to the endothermic side when we get to the sort of, uh, when we get to the trickier examples there. To make more, specify what you're making more of, and the final statement, to oppose the change I made to the system. Okay, so this one here, if I, the fact that we are changing is decreasing the temperature. So if I decrease the temperature, the equilibrium is going to shift to, if I decrease the temperature, so the temperature is getting colder, they're going to want to make it hotter so it's going to shift to the hot side which in this case here as we've labeled it there is the right hand side so we can go to the hot side or because uh, it's the hotter side it's the side that's releasing energy it's the endothermic direction. So to the hot side, or a better way of putting it, because it's releasing heat, that would make it exothermic. So we could say uh, it shifts it to the right side, which is the hot side. We could say it shifts it to the right in the exothermic direction. Now we are going to do more detail on whether it's exothermic or endothermic in a few moments, so don't worry about that too much just yet. To 
make and what's it going to make more uh, it's going to make more products uh, specifically the SO3 because that's the only product in this reaction here um, to oppose the change I made to the system okay here we go let's have a one so here you go have a go at the next one by yourselves okay so have a go at this one for yourself right then let's do this so if i and in this case we are increasing the temperature of the entire thing everything the left hand side the right hand side equally so you're trying to make it hotter they're going to try and make it colder so it's going to shift to this is the cold side of the equation so that is the uh that's the way that the equilibrium is going to go so the equilibrium is going to shift to the left to the cold side and if it's the colder side that's because energy is being absorbed therefore that is the endothermic direction to make more reactants specifically the sulfur dioxide and the oxygen to oppose the change i made to the system Okie dokie. So hopefully that was relatively straightforward. Uh, let's add another layer of difficulty then. Let's bring in the idea of the exothermic and the endothermic reaction. So let's make sure you actually uh, can remember the difference between exo and endo and what it would look like in terms of the energy change graphs or the energy level diagrams. So if there is a task for you to do on the screen there. Please crack on with that, please. OK, then, so here are the solutions to that little task there. So the one that was on the screen originally was the exothermic reaction. The energy of the reactant started high. The product had a lower energy. Therefore, energy is given off to the surroundings. So energy given away. The surroundings are going to get hotter. The chemicals themselves are going to get colder. I know that feels a bit strange, but that's how it is. OK, the energy is given off to the surroundings got to use that bit of language there therefore delta h that's change in enthalpy or change in energy we can just leave it as is negative so let's say that was 100 that was 50 100 minus 50 You do the product's energy minus the reactant's energy, so the 50 minus 100 will be minus 50, okay? Uh, the endothermic reaction, therefore, is going to look like this in an energy level diagram. The reactants start with a relatively low quantity of energy. They absorb energy from the surroundings, so the surroundings get colder. Heat is taken in, endo in. Therefore, the reactants have a low energy to begin with, and the products have a higher energy. Starts with low energy, ends with high energy. So the energy change delta H is always going to be positive. So in a chemical reaction, uh, in a reversible reaction specifically, we obviously have got the forward reaction and the backward reaction. Now, it does matter if it is an exothermic or endothermic, because if the forward reaction is exothermic, then the reverse reaction must be endothermic. So in this example here, you can see that the forward reaction here is minus 250. Because it is negative x, your x is bad, is a silly way to think about it. So your x, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, your x was very bad. That's why the, your x, okay? But they were quite hot, hey, <laughs> because x, so heat, hot, yeah. It left you feeling cold because endothermic. But it was a good thing. It was a positive thing that you ended the relationship. So despite the fact that you're cold and alone, the end of the relationship was a positive thing because they were bad because your ex is bad. Silly way to think of it. Um, I remember one or two of you quite enjoyed that uh, analogy last year. You know who you are, scrunchy lady. So... That negative there means that one is the exothermic. So we can actually label that as exo. So if that way is exothermic, that means heat is being given out this way. So that is the 
hot side of the equation. So the exothermic direction is always going to point to the hot side. This way it has got a positive number. If it's got a positive number, that means it's endothermic because it was the end of a bad thing. So it's positive. So this way is going to be your endo. Therefore, this side is going to be the cold side. That says cold. That says cold. Uh, so cold side, hot side, great. So within a chemical reaction, within a reversible reaction, we can say that there's exothermic parts and endothermic parts. But actually, if we put all of those together, we can actually say that a reaction is overall exothermic or endothermic. So as I've just described, in this case, the forward reaction is exothermic. Therefore, the right hand side is the hot side. The reverse reaction is endothermic because it's positive. Um, and what we've got here is un positive 150 kilojoules per mole. Here we've got negative 250 kilojoules per mole. We do the exo minus the endo. The overall reaction, so minus 250 minus 150 is minus 100 overall. So the overall reaction is exothermic. So delta H there of minus 100 kilojoules per mole. Now, a lot of this sort of exothermic, endothermic stuff you should have already done in uh, developing fuels. I know quite a few people struggle with developing fuels. That's why I did want to just make sure we re-establish those basics there just in case. Uh, and don't worry, we're not going to do a HESS diagram right now. So good times. OK, so let's see if we can actually apply this uh, to an example. OK, so here are some questions very similar to the style that we did before, but instead of it being pressure or concentration, I've just given you the equation. I've not said whether it's a hot or a cold side, but what I have done is said if the forward reaction. There's your clue. Forward reaction. There's your clue. I'll just give you a moment to have a go and see what you think would happen to the position of the equilibrium. You're very welcome just to say it shifts to the left, shifts to the right, towards the reactants, towards the products. Or if you want, you can do the full written answer in that full answer format just to get some really good practice at that. Off you go. Okie dokie, so for number one, that number is positive. Um, therefore, if it's positive, it's the end because it was the end of a bad relationship. So the forward reaction is endo. So here we go. I'll put endo there. That says endo. The endo is going to point to the cold side. So that would be the cold side. Therefore, if the forward reaction is endo, the backwards reaction is exo. So that's going to be the hot side. Uh, and what are we actually doing in this case? What is it? So what has it asked us to do? Uh, state the result of an increase in temperature. If you're increasing the temperature, it's going to try to decrease the temperature. So it's going to go to the cold side. So it's going to shift to the right and therefore make more products. In number two, what have we got? Forward reaction being minus. So because it's a negative, that means the forward reaction is exo. So forward reaction is exo so that's going to point to the hot side therefore that one is endo so that is the cold side i'm really not very good at writing like that okay so if it's increasing the temperature it's going to shift to the cold side the cold side in this equation is the left hand side shifts to left so more reactants are made OK, so so far, not too shabby. We did have to recap some of the stuff about exo and endo and the signs there, but I think that went pretty well. Would they just ask about one factor in the exams? No, of course they wouldn't. They would probably ask about a combination of factors. So they would probably give you a reaction and say from this reaction and give you like, let's say the enthalpy change of it. They'll say uh, which factors would force you to make the most product or what effect would increasing the pressure and lowering the temperature have on this rate of reaction. So it's much more likely they'll combine a few factors together.
So on the next slide that you're going to see, there is actually some combinations. Here we go. Okay, so this one, it's saying, state how you'd alter the temperature and pressure to increase the yield of the product. So you're trying to make more product each time. How would you go about doing that? By manipulating the temperature and the pressure. Don't forget, check out the signs. Count up the number of molecules on each side of the equation. Feel free to label this as much as you like. Now, labelling it doesn't get you any marks that I've ever seen, but labelling it helps me in particular figure out what is going on. So, have a go at those, please. Okie dokie, so I've just copied the key information over there from the slide itself. So, let's have a look at... so. What we're trying to do in this case, uh, this is a method of producing methane, uh, of producing methanol. Let's first have a look at pressure by counting up the number of particles on each side. Left hand side, we've got one lot of carbon monoxide, two lots of uh, hydrogen. So we've got three particles in total on the left hand side. On the right hand side, all of that is just one molecule. So that one molecule, that is the low pressure side. Low and high. So if we're trying to maximise the quantity of this and this is the low pressure side we need to do the exact opposite so for increasing our yield of that product we need high pressure what do we need in terms of temperature well this number that they've given us here is a negative so negative means it is exothermic because your x is bad for you so the forward reaction is exo so this side is the hot side uh, just for completion let's just go endo is reverse reaction so that is the cold side so if we're trying to maximise the quantity of methanol being produced, we want it to be the opposite of that. So we need a low temperature. OK, because what we need to do to make it make the most of the product is do the opposite of the conditions that that one prefers. So that wants it at a low pressure and a high temperature. So the forward reaction so the right hand side of the equation has a low pressure and a high temperature associated with it. So we have to do the opposite to make that happen. Question number two. Okay, so let's have a look at the number of particles present there. So we've got one of that, one of that, one of that. So we've got one on the left hand side, two on the right hand side so the left hand side is low pressure the right hand side is high pressure if we're trying to make the right hand side we need to do the opposite of high pressure which is obviously low pressure in terms of temperature we've got a positive number there so that is the End, end of a bad relationship is a good thing. So the forward reaction is endothermic, therefore this is the cold side of the equation. So the reverse reaction, or the backwards reaction is exo, so that is the hot side over there. So we need to make it the opposite of cold, which is hot. So we're going to have to have a high temperature. Okay, so that is how temperature affects the position of equilibrium, whether it be an exo or an endothermic reaction. The only factor we've not really talked about in this case is a factor that also affects rate of reaction is the presence of a catalyst. Now, the reason why I've not spent time doing anything on it is because catalysts do not affect the position of equilibrium. Now, they do have an effect, 
but only in the time it takes to establish that equilibrium. So let's say you had an uncatalyzed reaction, you have it in a closed reaction vessel, you start with reactants, they react, and let's say they take two days to establish the dynamic equilibrium. If you added a catalyst to that reaction, it might only take a few hours instead of two days. So it will increase decrease the time it takes to establish an equilibrium, but it has no preference for the forward or backwards reaction. Both the forwards and backwards reaction are catalyzed, i.e. sped up, at the same rate or to the same rate. Okay, so catalysts have no effect on position of equilibrium. It doesn't favor the left-hand side or the right-hand side. It speeds the rate up equally for the forward and the backward reaction. So catalysts, no effect. Okay, so that is basically GCSC uh, e equilibrium recapped, recovered, and a little bit more detail added there. Um, the next stage is to add numbers to it to make it closer to what we'd expect at the A level. Now, all the things that we have just gone over, you can see in past paper questions on A level exams. OK, just because I keep saying that it's based on GCSE knowledge, that doesn't mean it's not going to be there in A level. It is a very common question on A level. OK, so what I'd advise you doing now is going to have going away to have a look at some past paper questions. For my students, I will share those with you and the answers on Edmodo. For other students, if you are not one of my students and you happen to have magically appeared here somehow, uh, check out your exam page website. They have some past paper questions that you should be able to access for free. If not, ask your own teachers, okay? That is it for now, ladies, gents, girls, boys and others. Uh, make sure you are keeping safe, keeping well, washing those hands and staying alert. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.